President Biden's new election strategy seems to focus less on big rallies and more on conveniently timed policy announcements. So let's go off the wall to see just some of his last ditch efforts in hopes to garner support. You know, where did we see Joe yesterday in Atlanta talking to uh, black owned small business, small group of people. But those types of events usually are, are uh, there's the precursor to it is some policy announcement trying to cater to a group. Well, the, and the big one that you've heard about um, policy when it comes to voters is to forgive student loans. Well, let's take a look at Joe's history with the student loan business. What you'll see, Pete, is in history. Joe Biden has been pushing the growth of the student loan industry for most of his career. <laughs> Since before I was even born, Joe Biden was involved in saying we need more access to student loans. Why might that be? Well, he's a senator from Delaware. Delaware. What is Delaware known for? Being the corporate headquarters capital of the world of banking. So he's been on the side of banks for a really long time when it comes to loans. And not just pushing student loans, but making sure students can't get out of student loans. He's uh, passed bills blocking students from seeking bankruptcy protection, uh, made it harder as recently as 2005 to discharge these. So as a senator, just get, he was all in for the interests of his state, which is blocking students from getting out of student loans. Getting you in, not getting you out. Not letting you, you're locked into this loan. Now that he's president or was a candidate, he needs to cater to younger voters, and as a result, he's been peddling student loan forgiveness. $160 billion in student loan forgiveness. You point out why, the political reasons. Look at his polling among voters under the age of 30. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is, uh, it's, it's dead even in a way that they've counted on basically a two-to-one advantage amongst young people, which is eroded. I mean, that means the student loan forgiveness hasn't worked. A lot of kids, kids who did pay their student loans don't like the fact that others don't have to. And one small thing... Biden doesn't care well whether this is deemed as constitutional or not. That some of his student loan forgiveness has already been shot down. It may in the future, but it has a political hey, benefit. Not incidentally, quite importantly, this same time period, if we went through the same history, it's the same time frame that the cost of college has absolutely exploded. You shove loans and the price of college goes up. By the way, you could have the same information on things like crime. I mean, Joe Biden suddenly now is a, is a you know, criminal justice reform guy and everything. He was lock him up, throw the, way, the key a long time ago too. So he'll change in any way he needs to. Take a look at the change in policies when it comes to China. Uh, Joe Biden has raised the tariff on EVs coming from China from 25% to 100%. I mean, candidate Biden s slammed Trump for tariffs on China. Said we can't do that. China's not a threat time and time again. He's quietly, by the way, mostly kept the Trump tariffs on China his entire time. Now he's tripling the rate, quadrupling the rate on EVs. And why? Same reason as, as the student loan uh, policy. Take a look at what's going on with him and what he needs in terms of votes. Michigan, of course, he needs the state of Michigan. It's the highest number of people employed in the auto industry. The EV industry, electric vehicles, is cratering right now. So it, because it's so expensive to create, no one wants them. So what China's trying to do is flood the market so he's putting tariffs on them to try to prevent them from bringing in cheap EVs to save these jobs. But the problem is the EVs aren't going anywhere in America either. And again, another problem Joe created, the left created, that he's trying to fix that won't work. And the same thing is going on when it comes to border security. Look, you know the problem, the number of record gotaways uh, when it comes to border security. Uh, has absolutely exploded. This is this is from 2021 to 2023. Mm -hmm. We now have one, over 1 1.5 total known gotaways under Biden. And the reason we're talking about this is there's rumor after rumor coming from the White House, Will, that uh, there's an executive action coming right. on changing amnesty rules. Oh, just as the elections because show up. Look at these poll numbers. 31% now down from 61%. Look, look this is Among staggering. Hispanic, Hispanic, Hispanic voters. Hispanic voters in December of 2023 were at 61%, <clears throat> Joe. Now they're at 31 That's a collapse. So here's what he's saying to Pete's point about possible executive action when it comes to illegal immigration. Give me the power. I've asked him the very day I got in office. Give me the border patrol. Give me the people. Give me the people who judge it. Give me the people who can stop this and make it work right. He said time and time again that he doesn't have any additional power to do anything, and now suddenly he's finding that power. Here's a headline, by the way. You can see when it comes to his new potential executive action on border policy. Uh, I believe we have it. Yeah, New York Post. Biden plans executive order to shut down. Once crossings reach 4,000 a day. Oh, so come on in, 4,000 people and unknown gotaways after that is closed.
All right, same Solid thing. Policy. Look at what's going on when it comes to Israel and Hamas, by the way. So he's caught in a position where he doesn't know can't win. which can't win. He's losing votes on the far left. So the White House is considering resettlement of people from Gaza into the United States. Really? From Gaza. Into really? The yes. So that's going to work great. Uh, by the way, I don't know how that helps with these numbers where he's underwater on this issue uh, as well. The idea of bringing Gazans to the United States in that conflict, when Egypt, which is right next door, <coughs> won't take a single soul, it's not hard to say no to that kind of proposal. But again, he's been browbeaten by far leftist open borders types for a long time. And now they're talking about this. Do they know the indoctrination that's pumped into the minds of these kids in Gaza from Hamas? Right talk the to United States. I think they think off the wall's gotten too easy for me. It's like they, somebody put... You hear me tripping on this? I'm here off the wall. They're putting I was like looking at your marbles under my feet while I'm doing off the wall. Well, that's just next level stuff. <laughs> that's just I mean, I, maybe I put them there to see how you two would perform. Easy. You were getting too comfortable with your job, Will. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did to Joe. <laughs> All right, marbles up next. Floor. Kelly Clarkson sets the record straight on Ozempic. Gen Z turns to matchmaking. Okay, we're going to uh, back up here. I wanted to show just part of that right there on what they, they was talking about pertaining to economics and economy, etc. Now we're fixing to go over into something that's actually worrisome. Um, that's kind of related around the same thing is what's going on right now with China. Please listen to this. Carriers, Because America's whole defense uh, philosophy is built on the idea of projecting power. We don't have to have a base on your in your country, although we do have them in many countries, we can have a floating base outside your country and project F 35s and F 15s and 16s at you all day long. Well, not no, you can't if a hypersonic missile can take all of them out in the first 45 minutes of a conflict, right? And that's why watching what China does is a prediction of how they would attempt to project power. This is very different for China. You listen to their rhetoric in the past oh, we're, 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 we're not offensive, we're only defensive, we have no ambitions outside of. Our country, maybe our hemisphere, but not the world. And you watch what they're doing with their military, and their goals are bigger. And it's sure. not just military. Oh. They're all, it's, it's also economic. The economic plays that they're making on infrastructure in our own hemisphere is frightening. But, Pete, we're also just focused on so many. I mean, how can we focus on this new drone airstrip or whatever they're calling it, uh, you know, in, in the seat? How can we do that when we're focused on DEI and making sure that our you know, ships well, that's, are green. That's my point and about to the detriment of human capital. Exactly right. So the war on warriors Promoting talks about... Rachel Levine to Admiral. Or well, all those personnel doing. things are, are real, right? But this, this scary, one of the scariest parts is uh, on capabilities. So we're focused on electric tanks. Yes. We're focused on electric tanks. So China's building aircraft carriers for drones. And by the way, their manufacturing capacity on the naval side is exponentially more than ours. So they can pump out ships way faster than we can at this point. And we're worried about whether our Humvees emit carbon. I mean, that, that's how backwards our view is. So uh, if, and all of this is outlined in the war on warriors, both the personnel side and the strategic side and the incentives for generals, which are totally out of whack uh, for what they're focusing on. But I'll read real quick an excerpt which makes a mention of China uh, in the introduction. Close your eyes. I'll read to you. <laughs> In the story, war, it's, story, time, with story time with Pete from the War on Warriors. It goes, in the War on Warriors, I describe how we got here, what the threat is, the left's mode of attack, and how we can take back the high ground to save our military. Like the issue of education, if we fail, we fail all future generations of America. It's one thing to lose our classroom. It's another to lose the ability to execute close air support or deter communist China. If we lose our military, the world's last best hope is toast, and then freedom is toast. Because that military eventually will be turned on us, which is a which is a future of what happens if it becomes a political arm of our country, which it never was. I never had issues serving under Obama or under or under Biden. That wasn't the issue. It was, hey, do I have a mission? Am I, do I have what I need? Do I have the guys with me to do it? But it's, at this point, they were focused so hard on pushing certain constituencies out, patriot extremists, vaccine deniers. Uh, that they're, it feels like they're creating an ethos of only one acceptable view yeah. inside the military. It's a purge, as you talked about For yesterday. Sure. It, this is not a very soothing um, story time. It wasn't a soothing, no. <laughs> I'm going to uh -huh. get nightmares after this. <laughs> well, listen, here's, here's, there's one phrase I want everybody to... 
History is not over. Yeah. It's not over. Like, just because America's A number one right now doesn't mean it will be in 20 years. And I don't want my kids worried about a UN dominated not by the communist Chinese because now they control all shipping lanes. Imagine when China controls all shipping lanes. The whole world's different. They're right working now, on that. They I know they absolutely are. Absolutely working on it. And that. we are working on electric ships. Yeah, it's scary. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to voice my opinion on what, what you're talking about here. First of all, you got to keep in mind, you're dealing with a nation over in China that I'm not going to go as far as saying that they're anti-Christ nation, like, let's say, Saudi Arabia or some of those other countries over there. But you're dealing with a group of people that could really care less about saving the planet but rather save themselves. We over here in America are more concerned about saving the planet than we are ourselves. Eventually, this is going to clash. And ultimately, whenever it does, I'm just afraid that it's going to clash, not in our favor, but towards their favor. And, of course, that's probably one reason why that all of a sudden we've seen President Putin want to latch onto the president of China that basically describes it right down to a T regarding Gog and Magog of the final war of all wars pertaining to the War of Armageddon. Now, I'm against war. I really am. I'm against war. I'm against conflict. I'm against um, problems at bay because I'm a man of peace. But at the same time, I'm a logical person in understanding that strength basically comes through power or power through strength. And the fact of the matter is that because the so-called corporate churches over here in America chose to do what they have chosen to do by not only putting the founder of the windmill ministries out on a limb in not wanting to support the windmill ministries missions, but in essence towards attacking him, attacking the very founder that helped to project the ideal of worldwide global initial peace. So ultimately, whenever this is all said and done with, after I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll already be gone from here, the people that will be to blame are the people that has been involved in this resistance movement that has brought this type of injustices into America's existences. Once more, you've got a group of people over in China that are more concerned about their own survival rather than the survival of the planet. And maybe in another logical way of looking at this, maybe they are <clears throat> more on, on target because the fact that they realize that you cannot stop Biblical Bible prophecy, because Biblical Bible prophecy is part of history. We got people here in America that wanted to change history. They wanted to change fundamental facts towards what went on in 1988 whenever nine tapes went to the White House inspiring Ronald Reagan. Today, 30 plus years later, Look what it has gotten us. Not only look what it has gotten us, but look what it could possibly get us. Now we're going to go to one more other detail here regarding the weather and what's going on with our temperatures of our seas. Foxnewsbooks.com, by the way, pick up War on it. Oh, also, one more thing. You can get a signed copy. At War on Warriors. Well, I saw it on the Instagram. Stacks and stacks. stacks and sta
Yeah, just letting you know. All right, turning now to your headlines. At least seven people, including three children, hurt after a propane tank exploded at a restaurant just outside of Detroit overnight. According to local reports, witnesses say a heat lamp fell just before the explosion. Five of the victims, including all three children, were taken to the hospital, while two others were treated at the scene. The explosion is still under investigation, but police believe it was an accident. And the Louisville Metro Police Department confirming there's no body cam footage showing the arrest of world number one golfer Scotty <laughs> Scheffler on Friday. Scheffler is facing assault of a police officer and other charges after he was accused of hitting an officer <coughs> who tried to give him directions while heading to the PGA Championship. Hitting like that way. That, that, that insinuates a physical attack. Grab the car, then stop. Mm -hmm. Off strike. Meanwhile, Scheffler struggling yesterday. He's now tied for 24th on the leaderboard. He's set to tee off this afternoon around 12.15 Eastern time. He shot 66 after getting arrested. Yeah. He kind of came back to earth yesterday. That's not, the, these are not the um, headlines that I'm wanting to touch off on. I'm wanting to touch off on what they was talking about a while ago pertaining to basically our environment. So we're going to have to roll this forward here <clears throat> so I can pretty well glance through this and find it real quick, which may take an actual minute or two. But the bottom line is this, whenever it comes to the survival of the fittest, various nations are awakening and understanding <clears throat> what, what has happened here and what caused it was basically a retaliation from those that claimed that they had faith in God, <clears throat> those that claimed that they believed in the same belief that the founder of the Windmill Ministries believed in pertaining to the hereafter world, pertaining to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. But seeing is believing, and it's one thing to do as I do, and it's another thing to do as I say to do, and the world in general is finding out just exactly the hypocrisy and how deep the hypocrisy is in America regarding religious prophe prophecy issues. <clears throat> I think, um, by and large, these other countries have always known about the hypocrisy here in America pertaining to how they say one thing and do just the very opposite, basically. But now it's becoming more and more evident, especially whenever you put everything on the line regarding what's happening with our environment and what's happening with, um, with the oceans uh, heating up that's going to cause more and more drastic um, forces of nature weather events that now these other nations are awakening to the fact that, hey, we are on a trajectory right now of doom and gloom, and there's no way of stopping this doom and gloom. And because of it, we're going to focus more on the survival of our people than we are the survival of the planet, because they're realizing that they have crossed over the threshold to the point of no return. In other words, there's not going to be no way of reversing the damages that humanity has already caused to the planet because once more of the resistance movement of them not wanting to put the founder of the windmill ministries out in the limelight beginning in 1988, 1989, 1990. I mean, it's just, it's very obvious of what's going on. This is only one uh, detail See, of that right here. Rising. But it wasn't all work after the cars were moved. Members of the NASCAR teams started swimming in the brand new pool right there in turn one. We actually had someone dive into the water. The fans absolutely now now we're by and large people are taking that as as a entertainment type deal. But the fact of the matter is this should not be looked upon. Th this should be alarming that our weather and our infrastructure our roads, our bridges, etc., is basically cracking right below our feet or flooding right in front of our very eyes, and we want to sit back and laugh about it or make fun of it. None of these things are are uh, entertaining. Here, here, here we go right here on the graphics that I was that I was wanting to discuss pertaining to the abnormality of our.
planet pertaining to the heating. Please listen. Rick, write me for our Fox weather forecast. Oh, man. I was laughing at your reference, Pete. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. I thought you might appreciate that. We're all going to be in trouble after that one. <laughs> all right. Take a look at the weather maps. Tell you what's going on. All right. So I have not talked much about the tropic season that's coming at tropical season, and we need to because <sighs> we're expecting a lot of activity. So take a look at this. This map, just so you see, that red line there is our average sea surface temperatures. And sea surface temperatures is one of the main contributors to having hurricanes form or tropical systems form. Now look where that little yellow line is. That is where we are right now. The ocean in the Caribbean is warmer than we've ever experienced it before. In fact, temperatures in the ocean right now in the Atlantic Basin are like August kind of temperatures. And that main... August type temperatures in May. Think about that for a second. August type temperatures in May, <clears throat> and we know the upper loft above the clouds is erratically warming. And because of it, it holds more moisture. And whenever it does release it, it releases it in the form of a deluge. And that's the reason why you've seen the NASCAR race basically postponed for a whole day in regards towards basically getting flooded. And then after swimming in the water and trying to entertain each other, bye. This should be one of the most alarming factors in the concept of survival that humanity can ever, ever think about. And people like China, I think, are putting those factors into the right factors while we're still playing with the ideals or actually laughing or entertaining the ideals. It's, it's a very, very sickening feeling in knowing not only in what has occurred that should not have occurred, that has caused us to be where we are, but it's a very, very sickening feeling in understanding that by and large, even though there may be one or two out there that are, that are bringing that are bringing the facts to the limelight, the majority of the people over here in America are still not convinced of these major issues that are going to affect each and every one of our lives. Just like what has recently happened just within the past two two weeks of Houston, uh, Houston Texas, getting approximately 22, 23 inches of rain uh, just within a short period of time. And then on top of that, they, they got hammered about three days ago with excessive winds uh, driving over 100 miles an hour in addition to even that much more flooding rains in the Houston, Texas, lower southern areas. People, people over here in America are full of hypocrisy. And they claim and they say that they believe in the prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're not properly preparing themselves for them. I continue to tell people, the Bible says to flee into the mountains whenever you shall start to see these things starting to occur, indicating that even Christ foreseen where we was going to be today over 2,000 years ago because of the initial damaging damages that humanity is bringing upon to itself. You can't be no clearer than that. You can't be no clearer than that. That is where we are right now. The let's let's back it up just a little bit. Right there. Map, just so you see, that red line there is our average sea surface temperatures. And sea surface temperatures is one of the main contributors to having main contributors. tropical systems form. Now look where that little yellow line is. That is where we are right now. The ocean in the Caribbean is warmer than we've ever experienced it before. Ever. In fact, temperatures in the ocean right now in the Atlantic Basin are like August kind of temperatures. August. That main development region. That's where you see where most of our big hurricanes form those water temperatures. 
temperatures there are incredibly warm. We're talking about temperatures at around six, seven degrees above where they would typically be. That goes, by the way, in across the Caribbean and across the Gulf. And because of that, expecting to see a really active season this year for hurricanes, probably or very close to getting to record-breaking season. So if you're anywhere along the Gulf, along Florida, along the eastern seaboard, and you're thinking, hey, I don't really have my plans yet in place for hurricanes, Now's the time to do it. Do it before you're competing with everybody else for those same resources. All right, that's my PSA, guys, for tropical. It's a good point. Right now, you're heading a lot of people to Lowe's or uh, Home Depot. This is a good weekend to do it. Smart. Thanks, Rick. Thank Thank you, Rick. All right, coming up. I'm going to go as far to say that that puts us in more of the bullseye in a Category Five hurricane versus a Category Three hurricane. Once more. These are these are um, these are abnormalities that humanity has brought upon to itself because we thought that this was 